First of all, congratulations on being named England's Player of the Year. How much does that mean? Yeah, it's, um, it's really nice. Um, I was actually getting a bit choked up when, when Millie presented it to me. I couldn't look her in the eye. You know, the group is so talented and there's so many incredible players to choose from. So, yeah, I just feel really grateful um, to everybody that voted, really, and gave me this lovely, beautiful trophy. Since being back at home, how do you reflect on the World Cup experience in Australia? Um, to be honest, I don't think I've really processed it yet. Um, I think my current reflections um, have been reasonably positive ones. I think it's obviously always tough when you go there to win gold and you, you, you come away with something different to what you set out to achieve. Um, to play in a World Cup final is, is not a small thing at all and it's something that very few players, um, let alone people, get to experience. Um, and I think that, you know, I just feel kind of grateful for that and grateful that I got an opportunity to do it, you know, in the sense that, you know, I used to write stories about that as a kid, about playing in a World Cup and then, then it happened. So it didn't quite work out the way that we would have liked. But, um, yeah, re really proud of the team, the way we came through um, the adversity that we faced. And, um, yeah, we can, we can take pride in the silver medal for sure. When you think back to the World Cup final, mm. what first comes to mind? Probably the penalty save, if I'm being really honest. That's probably not the right thing to say. I want to kind of glaze past, like, I, the pictures that come into my mind are... The first one is, like, that team picture on the podium where we're all kind of, like, smiling, but you can see we're all disappointed, but we know that we want to be appreciative for the people that have supported us and acknowledge what we've done, so... But then straight after that, I just think about the penalty, really. That's the moment that really stands out in my mind. What was winning the Golden Glove like? Bittersweet? Yeah, really bittersweet. That, that part is like, it's strange because it's like the penalty saved that the, the whistle hadn't gone. So we were like it was really in it. Whereas the Golden Glove, it was like after it and it was after the loss and it was after you're trying to process the fact that we didn't achieve what we set out to. So... It was really bittersweet, and I remember speaking to Will, um, like our, our team ops guy, and he was like, I know you're not going to want to go up, but you need to go up and collect your trophy. And I was like, I'm, I'm just going to, like, I, I want to find a way to smile in that moment because it, I want to look back on that and be happy and not look back and think, you know, you couldn't have just smiled for two seconds just for the picture and just for the memory and... There's plenty of things to be proud of from that summer. You know, don't let outcome overcrowd process, which we often do as humans, I think. What did you make of the Luis Rubiales kiss? I think just generally, like, disappointed that it happened, I think, and it's still ongoing now. Um, it's disappointed that I feel like that has really overshadowed what the Spain team achieved. And us as an England team are obviously gutted that we, like, fell short and I don't know what they're going through. They're still living it. They did achieve something really, really great. They set out what they achieved, like what they wanted to go and do, they did. Um, like they, they became the best in the world, um, which is every player's dream. And I feel like the conversation has been, yeah, not around the football. And I think that's, re I just feel really sad for them, for the girls that I know. Um, and also f for women's football in general, I think it's just, kind of sad. The fight for equality continues between Spain and the Federation. Closer to home though, the pay dispute between the Lionesses and the FA mm -hmm. is yet to be settled. What's the latest with that? Um, to be honest, I think we're in a, in a good position um, because kind of the response that we've had from, from the FA has been an open one um, in terms of wanting to sit down and have a conversation and um, we've got a conversation lined up um, with some senior people. And um, I, th I'm, I think as a whole group, we're really hopeful about there being a positive conclusion and, and, a, and a quick one as well, which is what we all want, so. As for you, it's been a roller coaster of emotions regarding the battle with Nike and the goalkeeper shirt. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to speak out? I felt compelled. Um, I debated it a lot in my mind. After winning the award in February, I felt a real responsibility to speak up for goalkeepers even more. You know, the goalkeeper union is a very passionate group. Um, and I felt that it wasn't right what was happening and I felt like a dangerous message was being 
sent to the world um, and to young kids. I kind of want to move on from that now because I feel like we've now, Nike have responded. Um, I had a conversation with them last week and we had a really positive conversation um, and they're, they're making changes um, and they understand where they went wrong and, and they apologised and it's not going to happen again and, and for me that's just, in, that's just incredible and um, I'm so thankful for the support that I got back home even though I didn't know it at the time um, and from my teammates as well. Even after the World Cup people were asking me a lot about it and I didn't want to comment on it until I'd heard from Nike. Um, but having had that call with them and them letting me know kind of what's coming up over the next few months, I don't know what they've announced yet. Um, but they've, you know, said to me that there's going to be goalkeeper shirts in both adult and kid size and available in, in you know, before the end of the year. Um, and for me, that just feels absolutely incredible. From the World Cup final in Sydney to Sunderland, where you'll face Scotland, mm. what kind of threat do they pose? I, th I think they've got you know, a good team in terms of um, they've been together a while, I think, um, and they've been building for a while. Um, and we're obviously going to be really well prepared for the game and, and make sure we analyse our opposition properly. And I think the added spice of the, of the, of the derby, if you like, and the local rivalry, um, I think it's just going to add that, that sprinkle of, um, of fire to the game as well. Um, but it will be a tough match. You know, we know that from the players that play you know, in the WSL, but also they've got players that play in Europe. Um, so they're, they've got some really good qualities and we have to be on our game. Um, thank you very, very much to all the England fans that voted for me. Um, I appreciate an award like this more than you know, to have you in my corner, to have you in the team's corner. Um, I'm, I'm truly humbled and grateful um, and I hope I can continue to make you proud along with the rest of the team. Thank you very much for your support.